Chapter 2 The Four Rules of the Alcoholic Family Originally, the family system established rules of behavior and roles for its members, so the family could adjust to having an active alcoholic as a member. The rules and roles that were imposed on the individual members of the family were survival techniques. And although the family survived, the patterns of behavior that were established in the family were unhealthy. It is important to understand that the rules and roles of the alcoholic family did not just happen. They were a response to, and a way to deal with, having an active alcoholic as part of the family. The rules and roles are an attempt to bring order and stability to an increasingly chaotic and unstable situation. There are four general rules that operate in the alcoholic family. These rules are, number one, the rule of rigidity. Number two, the rule of silence. Number three, the rule of denial. Number four, the rule of isolation. Viewing the chart below, it can be seen that at the core of every alcoholic family is the disease of alcoholism. Even though the act of drinking may no longer be in the system, the rules will continue to operate and will be passed from one generation to another. To one degree or another, the above rules apply to all alcoholic families. When children grow up in alcoholic families, these rules, which are learned, become a part of the way they as adults respond to the world. They become an unconscious code of conduct. Because these rules are so ingrained into the children of the alcoholic family, when these children grow up, they have a tendency to search out people who follow the same rules. They feel comfortable with people who know the rules. That's why so many adult children of alcoholics become involved with either active alcoholics, other drug users, or with people who also come from alcoholic families. Time and time again I've heard ACAs say, I don't understand why over and over again I seem to get into relationships with the same kind of people. This happens because they seek people who have the same code of conduct, even though their rational mind may tell them that this relationship will be yet another painful disaster. The Rule of Rigidity The alcoholic family is inflexible. It cannot adapt to change easily, nor does it willingly allow family members to change. This rigid behavior manifests itself in all aspects of family life and has its roots in the way the family attempts to deal with having an alcoholic as a member. One of the effects of alcoholism on an individual is unpredictable behavior. As the alcoholism progresses, the behavior of the alcoholic becomes increasingly unpredictable and the family continually adjusts to this unpredictable behavior. In order to bring some stability to the family, more and more rigid rules of behavior are imposed on the non-alcoholic members of the family. As the family adapts to the alcoholic's increasingly unpredictable behavior, it becomes increasingly rigid. The rigidity of the alcoholic family system is easily observed in the way the family influences its children. In order for children to grow, mature, and to develop healthy social interactions, they need a place where there is room for them to experiment with life. They need a safe place where they can try different ways of behaving and where they can change and grow. The alcoholic family does not provide the kind of flexible environment that children need in order to experiment with life. The alcoholic family, in fact, provides just the opposite. Because of its rigid structure, the children in the system are not allowed to grow emotionally. The parents try to keep the children children. This does not mean that the children get no responsibility. They very often do. They get the responsibility to take care of parents, brothers, sisters, and to do household duties, but they never get the opportunity to develop emotionally into adults. The system is rigid and fixes the children as children. When these children become adults, they are in most cases still children emotionally. This is particularly obvious when ACAs are relating to their parents. They almost always have, quote, little kid, unquote, feelings when they are interacting with their parents. 
Manny, a 35-year-old ACA, summed up this feeling when he said, I'm a grown man, and when I'm with my parents, I feel like I'm five years old. I'm afraid to speak up for myself, and I walk around like I'm on pins and needles. Paradoxically, although Manny responded like a child emotionally when he was with his parents, he felt that he did not have a childhood. He often stated that he always felt like an adult. He, like many ACAs, felt he had lost his childhood, that he had never really been able to experience the freedom and joy of being a child. Growing up with the rule of rigidity translates, as an adult, into a need to control. The ACA's need to control is directly related to childhood experiences. ACAs learned that rigid rules of behavior are the way to control unpredictable situations. This often translates into life and people are unpredictable. Therefore, there is a need to control all aspects of life, including other people. This control means no spontaneity, and without spontaneity, there can be no playfulness or any real happiness. ACAs are generally very serious people. The Rule of Silence Members of alcoholic families are bound by a rule of silence. They cannot talk about what is happening in the family. This rule of silence extends not only to talking to people outside of the family, but also includes talking to the members of the family itself. The rule of silence not only bans talking about the behavior and actions of the family, it also bans talking about feelings. This no-talk rule is so strong that children who grow up in this family system have difficulty in expressing themselves for the rest of their lives. The rule of non-expression follows them, and they in turn teach it to their children. In examining this rule of silence, it is important to remember that the alcoholic family system has a vested interest in keeping its members quiet about what goes on inside of the system. Keeping silent is not just expedient but necessary for the system to function. If there were open and free communication in the system, individual members of the system would be forced to change. Change is the last thing that the alcoholic system is equipped to handle, i.e., the rule of rigidity. Children growing up in this silent system learn at a very early age that it is not okay to talk about certain things. Any discussion on the child's part about drinking, behavior that is related to drinking, or other non-socially accepted behaviors, such as physical abuse or incest, is quickly squelched. The child is unable to talk about what he or she sees or hears. This inability to talk about what is seen or heard has a direct effect on how the child will relate to the world. Without being able to do any reality checking, the child is forced to interpret the events of his or her life without the input from caring adults. As adults, these children often have difficulty asking questions. They feel that they should know the answers. And, of course, they don't. So they guess. This silence extends not to just what the child sees, but also to what the child feels. Along with not having permission to talk about what is seen, the child is not permitted to talk about any feelings that he or she may have as a result of the alcoholic behavior. The fear, anger, and hurt, core issues of adult children of alcoholics, have their roots in the inability of the family system to cope with these powerful feelings. As children experience the terror, rage, and grief that are directly related to the alcoholic behavior of the family, they cope by attempting to repress their feelings. They cannot talk to anyone about how they feel, so they cope the best way they can. The child living in an alcoholic family is like a pressure cooker on a stove. As the temperature goes up, the pressure inside the cooker increases. Instead of bleeding the pressure off slowly by talking, the child responds by adding thicker walls. Occasionally, the pressure gets too high and the child acts out and blows off some steam. But most of the pressure is kept inside and remains there for the rest of his or her life, unless he or she gets treatment. Mary, an ACA, had a father who liked to drink and drive. When he would go to bars and get drunk, he would often take Mary with him. 
Although Mary liked being with her father, she would be terrified when he was drunk and driving. Often her father would have accidents and drive the car into ditches or hit poles and trees. None of the accidents were major, but still Mary became terrified whenever her father would drive. At 11 years of age, Mary learned to drive by pushing her father out from behind the wheel of the car after he had passed out and then driving the car home herself. She did this for a number of years. Until Mary entered treatment, she had never told anyone about the fear that she had of driving with her father, and she had never told anyone about having to drive her father home. One of the results of Mary's having to keep her fear to herself and never talking about having to drive her father home was that she became extremely frightened when she was not driving. As an adult, Mary felt that she had to drive or something terrible would happen. After processing her fear and talking about her feelings of having to drive her father home when he was drunk, Mary lost some of this fear. Today, although Mary still prefers to drive, she will let another person drive. The only way ACAs can get free of the rule of silence is by talking about what happened to them and expressing their repressed feelings. Mary's case was not an extreme. All ACAs have the rule of silence, which operates at the expense of both the ACA's emotional well-being and ability to function honestly and openly in the world. The Rule of Denial The denial of the alcoholic family begins with the denial that there is any problem with alcohol. As the behavior of the family members become more and more dysfunctional, the denial becomes stronger and stronger. Denial is one of the cornerstones of the system. If the system can continue to deny what is happening, then it will not have to change. The people, particularly the children of this system, are surrounded by denial on all sides. What they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and feel in their hearts, they are told is not true. Not only are they told to ignore the behavior of the alcoholic, but they are also told to pretend that nothing is wrong, to pretend to be normal. It is important to realize that when I use the word told, I do not necessarily mean the spoken word. Although the alcoholic family rarely communicates directly with words, it does communicate to its members in a variety of other ways. Non-directive talking, body language, and the look from parents that most ACAs are familiar with are some of the ways the alcoholic family communicates. The conflict between what the child sees happening in the family and what the child is told to believe is happening is one of the basic conflicts of ACAs. They are continually trying to figure out what is going on and separate what is real from what is not real. They learn not to trust either themselves or others. The children in the alcoholic family hear the family say, we are a happy family and we stick together. And they see the adults in the family fighting and belittling each other. They see mom passed out drunk every day when they come home from school and are told, everything's fine and don't tell anyone about mom being sick. The denial of reality is a fundamental issue of ACAs. This denial also extends to feelings. When painful events occur, the feelings that naturally accompany those events are denied because people are not supposed to have these feelings. Sarah, an ACA, told her ACA's group, I do not feel anger. I've never felt anger. And I do not think I will ever feel anger. Anger, Sarah learned from her mother, was not a nice emotion, and good girls do not express anger. Of course, what she saw at home was a lot of angry people, sometimes shouting at each other and sometimes even hitting each other. There was no room in the family for her anger. It was downright dangerous for her to be angry. The result was her denial of her own anger and the ability to ever express anger or to deal with people who expressed anger. The reality was that Sarah was one of the angriest people in the ACA's group. When she finally allowed some of her repressed anger slash rage to be expressed, she reported an intense feeling of freedom and a sense of dropping a heavy load. Children model the behaviors of the adults in their lives. This is one of the ways they learn to become healthy human beings. 
In the alcoholic family, the denial of feelings is so prevalent that children never learn how to honestly express emotions. They see the adults in the family walk around smiling on the outside and boiling with rage on the inside. The inside emotions and the outside expressions on the family members rarely match. When the children of this family grow up, they will smile when they are angry, look blank when they are hurt, and remain in constant conflict with how they feel on the inside and what they show on the outside. If I pretend this is not happening, then maybe it will go away, is the motto by which many ACAs live their lives. Denying reality, particularly painful reality, is second nature. The it will be different this time way of looking or not looking at the world gets the ACA in many painful situations particularly in sexual relationships. Many ACAs will stay with a partner, pretending time after time that things are going to be different. And, of course, they never are. They get worse. The Rule of Isolation The alcoholic family is a closed system. It resists the movement of its members in and out of the system, and resists adding outsiders as members. The members cling emotionally to each other, but never become intimate. The alcoholic system tries to be self-sufficient. It creates the myth that no one outside the system will understand and that no one outside of the system is to be trusted. The system cannot afford to have people outside of the family know what is happening in the system. Therefore, some alcoholic families have a tendency to move from place to place. The family moves because it cannot bear the scrutiny of its neighbors. As the alcoholic behaviors become more and more extreme, the family becomes more and more isolated. The family that does not move a lot is often as isolated from its neighbors as the family that does move. I have often heard clients like Harry who lived in a small town while he was growing up, say, I lived next door to people for years and never spoke to them. At first glance, it would seem that the isolation of the alcoholic family would serve to draw the family together. Although many alcoholic families have the them-against-us attitude, the individual members are as isolated from each other as the family is isolated from the community. This is an important point, so I'll repeat it. The alcoholic family isolates itself from the community, and the individual members of the family isolate themselves from each other. The alcoholic family myth of, we will be here for you when you need us, is just not true. The alcoholic family is incapable of supporting its members emotionally or spiritually. They cannot be there during a crisis or at any other time. The individual members are isolated from each other, and when the children grow up, they continue to isolate from other people. Their feelings of loneliness run very deep. Michael, a 32-year-old ACA, continually complained of being lonely, even when he was in a relationship. He really wanted to have intimacy, but he did not know how. He felt, like many ACAs, that he was missing something that other people seemed to have. One of his statements was, I used to think that sex meant intimacy. Now I know that it is more than that, but what? I'm not sure. Growing up in an alcoholic family, Michael never had a chance to find out what intimacy was. The very nature of the alcoholic family inhibits the development of intimate relationships. Michael's family had a very rigid structure. The family did not talk about what was going on. Feelings and facts about behavior were denied, and he learned to isolate from other people in order to protect himself and survive. Michael had never had a chance when it came to developing intimate relationships. His whole way of viewing the world was opposed to the development of intimacy. Michael was a very typical ACA. Every ACA is codependent. It cannot be helped. The adult child was raised to follow a set of four rules that ensure the development of codependency. I define codependency as the condition of a person who is emotionally dependent on an outside source to get feelings of self-esteem 
and who focuses on external stimuli in order to not feel his or her own pain. All ACAs fall within this broad definition of codependence. As the ACA works to resolve the painful issues of growing up in an alcoholic family, the codependency is also treated. It is important to state that while it is true that all ACAs are codependent, not all codependent people are ACAs. Many codependents are raised in non-alcoholic, dysfunctional family systems or learn codependent behavior when they become involved in unhealthy relationships. The ACA is bound by the four rules of the alcoholic family. They use these rules as a way to live their lives. They really have little choice in the matter. This is how they learn to live and to survive as children. To become healthy and begin to live full and happy lives, ACAs must begin to break the rules of the alcoholic family. This is neither an easy nor a quick process, but it is being done by thousands of ACAs who are not content to remain bound by chains of rigidity, silence, denial, and isolation.